So our Constitution was created and the Revolutionary War was fought during a deadly smallpox epidemic. I don't think folks realize that. At that time and to this day, there's still no cure for smallpox. The mortality rate was 30% overall, 80% for children. 300 million people died from smallpox. To put that into perspective, currently the United States has 330 million people. That would have wiped out the entire country today. Still, our founding fathers created the First Amendment. They felt it was that important during an epidemic. COVID-19 is nowhere near as dangerous as smallpox. Our founding fathers felt that personal liberty and freedom were much more important to combat a headstrong democracy and a democratic, tyrannical government. COVID-19 deaths are barely a blip on the radar. More people die every year from the flu, which to those medically unaware is part of coronavirus family. More people die every year from smoking, which is still legal. More people die every year from cancer, which there is still no known cure, allegedly. Despite the hundreds of thousands of deaths that occur every year from the same ailments over and over again, our government has never shut down the economy or locked down our states or restricted our constitutional rights and personal liberties. This isn't about a virus, which seems to be acting more like a coagulating bacterium than a virus anyway, but that's besides the point. This is about Democrats and communists working together to assume power and control. This is about greed. We can't give in. Don't give in. Not even for a moment. It will allow them advancement one step at a time in this war against our individual freedom. The experts that they keep calling on, Dr. Fossey, are not there to guide us, okay? They are government employees paid very handsomely to give us fear and then to provide us with a false sense of security. If only we obey, but we can't obey, not now. Not anymore. This isn't the time to submit. We are on the cusp of another civil war or a revolutionary one. We must stand together. Yes, that part of the message is absolutely clear. But we need to stand together as an armed populace, a united front against a democratic, now tyrannical government that wishes to subdue and control us to track us, to monitor us, to remove us from our homes and put us into isolation, all under the name of a health threat. We are 300 million strong against the seats of the Senate, the Congress, the House, the Supreme Court. We vastly outnumber them by millions. If the majority of us say no to their demands, to their demands, to their encroachments upon our freedom, our personal liberties, there's literally nothing they can do. We can refuse to pay taxes. We can defund our government. We can refuse to follow their laws and regulations, their restrictions. We can refuse to register our guns so they don't know how many of us are armed. We can refuse to play their games any longer. We can just refuse. What are they going to do if we all say no, no more? We have the power. To be fair, we have all of the power to take our nation back. We're not China or Russia or the UK. We are, we the people. We are our nation. We are the law of our land. We hired the politicians. We put them into office. We can remove them. 
by force if necessary. They don't rule us. They work for us. And I think they've forgotten that. And I think they need to be reminded of that fact. Together, as Americans, we have to stand. We have to. United, armed, backed by our Constitution. The very document that was created to protect us from the government we now are dealing with. That piece of paper has no power until we invoke it. And that's what we need to do now before it is too late. We, we are the fucking people. And this is our country. And these are our freedoms. And we need to take them back.